What's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the Regular Guy Firearms channel. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about, okay, I'm getting an AR and, you know, what barrel length and gas system do you want, do you prefer, which one should I get, and then a million options, you know. So rather than explaining this through text and type in a paragraph a million times, what I would rather do is just make a video and then send a dude a link to that video, okay? Because I get lazy sometimes, and you guys ask a lot of questions. <laughs> so, um, here we go. We are going to talk about um, the AR, and it's common barrel lengths and common gas systems. Now, before I cover any of this, the question's going to come up, so I might as well address it now. People already see this and they're going to watch the video and stuff, so they're going to get the rest of the content. But when people ask me about pistol length gas systems in ARs, I'm going to tell them to walk away. And the reason why I tell them to walk away is that the gas systems are way too short, there's way too much overpressure, and there's not enough dwell time for those guns to be reliable. Um, and that's generally speaking. There are some companies that have produced okay pistol length gas systems, but it's also because they have either A, made it a piston gun, which totally removes all of this from the equation, or B, they have modified the rifle so heavily to the point where it is a proprietary system and that's why it works. But generally speaking, no they don't. They don't run well. Hardly ever at all. Okay. So, getting that out of the way. Now, we see four different barrel lengths. The 14.5, that is the military M4 length. The 16, we all know why that why that even exists. The 18 and then the 20 inch barrels. The 18, to me, it seems to be like a compromised barrel length, but it has had its uses, especially in like the DM realm. But, moving on from this. We see these four, Right? And then we see our three ga uh, gas systems, the most common, that is. That's the carbine, the mid-length, and the rifle-length gas systems, okay? The original, the M4, and then the compromise between the two. Okay. When one is asking what it is that they personally want, you need to ask several questions first, and you guys have seen this a million times in my videos. Before I go into what thing I want, I need to start asking a bunch of questions first. Now, you need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this thing? Okay. When you ask yourself, what is the purpose of this thing, you need to ask, ask again, what ranges am I expected to shoot? And finally, you need to ask yourself, um, once you have your purpose and the ranges that you want to shoot, you want to also ask yourself, you know, um, what do I plan on adding to it, and how long do I plan on carrying it? Okay. So, with that question, or set of questions in your head, let's go over some advantages and disadvantages based on gas system, and based on barrel length. And I'm going to make very generalized statements here because I know that there's a lot of in-between. Okay. Now, we're going to start with our barrel lengths first. And also, the caveat, again, that this is for a 5.56 millimeter rifle. Yes, I know that there are a million variants to the rounds out now because it's been out long enough. But we're going to talk about this because this is the most common. Okay. Speed for the 5.56 is absolutely life. Well, it's destruction, really, and you need to figure out um, which barrel length you want based on what you're willing to give up. Okay, now, the reason I say this is because, let's take the 14.5 as an example, a military M4. Okay. What happens when you fire a rifle round is that you have the explosion right in this area. And right when you have that, you have gases that are pushing a projectile down your barrel length. Okay, And as it pushes itself down this barrel length, it is then going to exit. Now, the amount of time that it spends in this barrel 
gives the gases that are pushing that projectile out with that force to burn off. And the shorter that barrel length is, the less time that those gases have to burn off. Okay, so with a 14 and a half inch barrel, you are going to have some unburnt powder that flies out of the front end of this thing because the barrel is short enough, okay, to where not enough time is afforded the project, uh, the explosion and burnt gases and stuff to burn off all the way before the actual uh, projectile exits. For those of you that have been into training classes and stuff, where you end up shooting pretty close to people, okay, some of you may have actually been hurt, been hit in the face by unburnt powders and stuff, okay. For those of you that do um, building clearance and stuff like that, or are on entry teams, or on, or on, or are on um, house clearing elements with infantry units and stuff like that, have likely had one of these fired really close to your face. And then it, you know, is rather annoying because you're getting hit in the face with unburnt powder. Now, why is this relevant? Well, because the 5.56 projectile, and let's use the gold standard against people in a military context, the XM193 or the 55 grain round, right? Is that the shorter that that barrel length is, the slower your projectile is as it exits the muzzle. And then, obviously, as it flies over distances, it starts to slow down. So it is affected at greater ranges at and past 200 yards. So you will be arriving at those ranges slower, thereby decreasing your lethal impact on that individual. And then the farther out it gets, the less lethal force that you have, because it is connecting a little bit slower, it's doing less of its tumbly thing, and it'll penetrate a little bit less. Okay. However, can you get those rounds there accurately? Now, with a 14.5, um, actually, this exact upper, I was at uh, Valor Ridge with Chad, and he was dinging stuff at 300 just fine, and I was dinging stuff at 300 just fine. It, it got to the point where both of us were tired of spotting the shot on a 300 uh, white painted piece of steel because we couldn't tell exactly where the dude was hitting anymore because he was hitting in the same black spot so many freaking times. Okay. So yes, you can arrive there and you can arrive there accurately, but you will arrive with less lethal force. And this means a lot to guys that are shooting farther away. Okay. And obviously as you start heading down the line, your bullets start exiting the barrel faster. Okay. The only point that you start getting diminishing returns is once you pass a 20-inch barrel. Because at that 20-inch barrel with, let's say, XM193 again, that the, the powders that are trying to burn off have burnt off. All it is is gas, pressurized gas, moving in that direction now. Once you get to 22 and 24, you have either the same muzzle velocity or at 24, you're actually a little bit slower. Okay? Now... <clears throat> with those advantages in mind, okay, we're also, whoa, by the way, when you are, the reason why this is relevant also is because of that, how far am I shooting thing, okay? Does it matter if you're using a 14.5 in a house as far as lethal force? No, you're not. If you're planning on hitting stuff at and inside 200 yards, Still no. Okay? If it's farther than that, that's where this matters. Okay? Um, so just keep cogniz cognizant thought of that. Now with the gas systems. There is a lot of hubbub and debate and stuff over this. Right? Now, again, generally speaking, you have your carbine length gas systems that will run on these two. Your mid-length gas systems that will run on these three. And then your rifle length gas system, which generally runs on a 20, but they're making their way to 18s. A lot of 18s, actually. With a carbine length gas system, you have um, a certain set of advantages, okay? And this really does uh, come into play when you're talking about carrying the thing for a very long period of time. I.e., you are a dude that patrols. A lot. Okay? Or even if you're the guy that just goes out and hunts with his rifle. With a carbine length gas system, you are... 
the best balanced. Okay, and the reason why you are the best balanced is not even so much the gas tube length. Okay, it's just where this is placed and how short these end up. Okay, now having this placed so far to the rear just disperses all of that weight and brings it closer to you, which makes it easier to hang on to, uh, just for long periods of time that is, and you can increase how long you sit here exponentially sometimes, because having all the whiz-bang stuff further out can tire you out a little bit, okay? And this is especially if you're doing drills where you have the rifle up for three, four, five, six minutes, that type of thing, okay? Or if you're just in a really high tension situation where you gotta where you gotta keep a rifle on a guy for a long time. Okay. Now there are a lot of complaints that with a lot of carbine length gas systems, especially with this hated thing because it's not in vogue anymore, that your hands are just too close together and that you can't get leverage on it and that you want a longer uh, hand guard so you can extend your hand out a little bit farther. That's valid. Okay. And I understand why people would want to do that. However, for a lot of military dudes, that's just not a freaking option. So, how do we get our arms further out? Okay. Extend your stock. Just extend your stock. Because now, I am pretty far out there. Makes sense? Now, you might not, you, you may or may not want to extend it all the way. I still personally don't. I'm usually in, you know, position two for everything. But... It may be an option for you. If you want to make the gun longer, make it longer. You don't have to attach another handguard on there. If you want to lighten up the rifle still, but you want to get your arms farther out. Food for thought. Mid-length gas systems. Oh, wait, I didn't go over the disadvantages yet. The disadvantages to having this gas system, okay, is not that it's unreliable. They run just fine. Okay, with all of these, you need to keep them lubricated. You need to keep your moving parts lubricated in the first place because gas is what is necessary to cycle the rifle, unlike a piston driven rifle. Okay, now here's the problem with this the problem with this is not that it's unreliable at all because they work just fine, it's been tried and true for decades now. The problem exists in the long term. In the long term, what you are going to end up uh, experiencing is that over, first of all, you know, two and three thousand rounds and stuff like that, if you use a good quality lube, it will start to burn it out, meaning it'll start to dry up the rifle. So you need to stay on that with lube a little bit more. The next thing that it will end up doing is that it will end up wearing out your moving parts just a little bit faster. And the reason why this is the case is because there is, like we were saying earlier, just a lot, well, the gas system itself, being as short as it is, the gas that's tapped off from your barrel here cycles into that action significantly harder, okay? Because there has just been less time for that gas to get pushed out uh, and burned off, so it will impact those, those moving parts quite a bit harder, okay? It's actually the exact opposite, uh the exact opposite effect as far as the gas is pushing the round, okay? Because it will physically impact that bulk group or that gas key uh, quite a bit harder than the other gas systems. So it will eventually wear out your moving parts with greater, fre with greater frequency, okay? And really all that means is that you're going to have to stay on top of your um, bolt and carrier group maintenance, meaning look for cracks and stuff a little bit earlier and all that other stuff. However, it is, contrary to popular belief by a lot of people that don't know how to think, a reliable system. Mid-length gas systems are pushed out a little bit farther. You can still maintain a really good balance with them, but they push on the, on the bolt and carrier group with less violence than a carbine length system. What this also translates to is it translates to a smoother recoil impulse. Now, there isn't a massive amount of recoil behind 5.56 like ever, okay? But a smoother shooting gun is still a smoother shooting gun, and a lot of people prefer this, okay? And you can still run these on all three of these barrel lengths, actually, because I've seen a few for the 18s 
but you see them on 14 fives and 16s. And generally speaking, the rails are a little bit longer, so if you don't want to extend your stock, you end up with a longer handguard that you can extend your arms out for. Okay? That is really the advantage and the point of the existence of a mid-length gas system. I don't really care what anybody else says. Still reliable, but the whole point was to get the gun to cycle smoother and have to replace parts less. That's it. With a rifle length gas system, this is the original. And uh, generally speaking, this is the most reliable of the three. And the reason why it's the most reliable of the three is that there is, uh, compared to the other two, less err force on your moving parts. There is less err uh, carbon and stuff getting it into your action and stuff, even though it's still a lot. It's just not impacting it as fast or as hard or with as much unburnt powder, okay? Because that gas is a long way to go before it gets to your moving parts, so it will dry out your lube with way less frequency, okay? Additionally, it is just a superb shooting rifle. Every rifle length gun I've ever shot, okay? Every M16, A2, and A4, and then civilian built gun is just nice to shoot, okay? It just doesn't move any place. And you'll have like a birdcage flash suppressor on it. Really great shooting guns. And another really big, big, big advantage to the rifle length gas system is that, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, you are just going, I mean, honestly, compared to the other two, you're replacing your moving parts almost never. Okay, I know guys that have replaced several extractor springs because they just wore them out than any of their moving components. You'll just do less maintenance with it. Okay. Now, with the advantages and disadvantages discussed on the barrel lengths and then the gas systems, which one do you choose now, right? Well... Just on my personal preferences based on my mileage, right? If I am going to do a lot of walking with a gun, if I'm going to do a lot of walking and my job is not as a DM, I'm going to pick a 14.5 and a carbine length gas system because I still need to reserve the ability to hit stuff far, okay? And you can still do it and it's still easily accomplished and it's a 5.56. I can wrestle a recoil of a 5.56 just fine. Okay? Because the word wrestle isn't even a, the appropriate word. But it's balanced. It's very light feeling. Extremely light feeling because it's balanced. And I can still hit stuff far away. And as long as I pay attention to what's happening with uh, my lubrication, everything's rosy. Okay? Oh, and good magazines. Buy good magazines. If I want a home defense rifle, stuff that I'm not going to carry very long, but I still need to be able to move around and stuff in the house with, um, it's, but it's a toss-up between a carbine-length gun and a 14.5, or a mid-length gun and a 14.5. Oh, a downside to this, however, is that you're going to need your muzzle device pinned and welded. Okay, if you don't want to be able to do any of that, or if you don't want to do any of that, and if you just want to be able to take stuff on and off, because I know a lot of guys that do that, just go 16. You're not, you're not losing very much as far as length, and honestly, there's a little bit greater ballistic performance after that. So, but as far as a home defense rifle, uh, because I'm not carrying it a while and everything else, I'm going to use a mid-length gas system in a 16-inch barrel because I still need to watch corners, and uh, the gun's going to recoil just a little bit softer. You can get those follow-up shots just a little bit faster and you're still impacting with a lethal force with a shorter barrel because distance isn't really a thing okay at that range if i am the dm okay um and this is specifically towards um military dudes find the talk roach grab his a4 give him your m4 put an acog on it call it good okay um, superb shootability 
and lethal force added. And because you get greater um, barrel length and stuff out of that, the freaking projectile is stable, uh, stabilized just a little bit better, and it yields better accuracy. So, and you have the most reliable gas system, regardless. So it's another advantage. Just to understand, it's a longer gun. You're going to have to freaking move around and stuff inside of vehicles, and you're going to have to dodge things. But you are greater tailored to that role than anything else. Okay. And if your unit is really cool about it, uh, an advantage that you can exploit is that if they allow you to change out buffer tubes and stocks, and this is only if they do, a really good idea is to get a collapsible buffer tube, okay, and recoil spring and buffer and all the things associated with that. Get a collapsible stock like this one, and if you collapse it all the way, you are at the same length as an AK-47. Food for thought. So, I know that there are going to be questions following this video and stuff. This is just general reference type material. So, when you think of your question, or if you've already thought about it, or if you've already typed it, that's cool. Just go ahead and throw that in the comments box below. If it's not a question and you just have thoughts on your particular uh, views and opinions or experiences based on the following, you know, just go ahead and leave that in the comments box below too, because a lot of times guys that ask questions end up getting, end up having their questions answered by you guys. So you guys are important in this process too. Okay. But that's all I got to say on this one. Uh, be sure to join us at Gun District. I will leave a link to our group in the description below. And remember, guys, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.